Yikes. This might not have been the best choice of historical figure to base a game on. Columbus Ogonoyoake isn't remotely historical, thank God, but it leans heavily into the myth that has surrounded Columbus. Christopher Columbus was, of course, a psychopathic con artist whose grotesquely incompetent attempts to sail to Asia would have killed everyone on the ships he brought with him, except for the lucky break that there was a continent in the way. After that, he did a lot of stuff that YouTube really doesn't like people talking about, even if they're saying it's bad, and spent the rest of his life in disgrace. 1992 marked the 500th anniversary of Columbus's arrival in the Americas, and there was a whole pile of Columbus-themed media out there at the time, all of which was awful and sold very poorly. You have three choices at the start of Columbus. Normal game. History game, which is the normal game, except there's a kind of timer on it. And sailing game, which lets you sail certain routes without having to play the rest of the game. You can also load the game here, and there are three battery save slots. And I know I'm in for a bad time when the battery save slots are occupied by people who haven't gotten past level one. Columbus is an RPG, and what you have to do is travel Europe, exploring dungeons, recruiting crew members, and getting resources from the local rulers. Columbus wants to gather enough for an expedition to the mythical land of wealth and riches called Japan. Yes, really. The end of the game is his arrival in the Americas, so we're at least spared going any further than that. When you're walking around on land, you can hit the A button to bring up the usual RPG menu. You can talk, search, check out your inventory. If you want to look at your stats, you have to hit select. And if you hit start, you'll bring up an options menu where you can save or load your game. You can save at any point. Towns not only have the usual armor, weapons, and item shops, you'll find chatty people who you can quiz about the local area, and some of them you can attempt to recruit for your crew. Your ability to recruit is based on your stats, and it can be affected by the equipment that you have. You start the game in Genoa, and after purchasing your starting equipment, and locating one of the lost journals of Marco Polo, you board a ship in harbor, and this is where your real troubles begin. You start the game at level zero, and you'll have to engage in some combat to get your level up. But at level zero, you could die in two hits. So the first thing you have to do is get a ranged weapon, and you have to locate a method of healing. Both of those can be found on the ship. And now we get to talk about combat. The combat system in Columbus is a train wreck, or shipwreck, I guess. When a character's turn comes up, you can either remove them on a grid, which you can't really see, or hit the A button to bring up a menu, where you can choose to attack, use an item, or rest. You can only move five times before you're exhausted and have to rest. Movement is the only thing that's affected like this, so you could attack a hundred times in a row and not be exhausted. However, that movement counter carries between combat. So if you moved three times in the first combat, and then moved twice in the next combat, then you're exhausted. The way that attacking works is that you just attack in the direction you're facing. I have throwing knives, so I throw a bunch of knives in that direction. You can't attack above or below you, so you have to maneuver around enemies who can attack you like that. And enemies can have ranged attacks of their own which they'll just shoot off randomly. Combat always starts with enemies around 10 squares away from you, so it plays out painfully slow. If you feel like you're at risk, then you can run away by moving off the board, though hopefully you don't get exhausted while you're trying to run away. Early on, if you can beat some enemies, then I strongly recommend saving. The healing item you find on the ship can be used repeatedly, so you'll always be able to recover but it's too easy to die early on in this game. If you manage to level up enough that you can defeat the boss of the boat, then they drop you off in Lisbon where you get to take Navigator School. And here you get into the final system of Columbus, sailing. At the school you're given a destination to sail to, and navigating the seas is about as easy as walking around anywhere else, though you can't go into any of the shallows. But what happens is every few squares of movement you have an encounter that you have to deal with. Some of these will be combat against sea creatures, but the other two are sailing events. 
You could be attacked by pirates who fire cannons at you. You don't have a cannon at this point to shoot back, so what you need to do is just get away from it. The best way to do that is wait for it to fire and then change course. The pirate ship will be stuck in place while you move away. The other event are storms which will have whirlwinds and logs flow around you, and all you have to do is avoid those while sailing to the east. To get your own ship which you can sail around freely, you have to go to a particular destination that you were assigned. And since this test was a simulation, if you get defeated en route, then you get to start over. And that's as far as I got in Columbus before I had to stop. From here you really get into recruiting crew members and exploring Europe. I can't say that Columbus Ogon no Yoake is completely unknown in Japan. I could actually find videos of people playing this one. But it seems like the few people who do remember it, mainly remember it for being a bad RPG. Setting aside the subject matter, this one is just packed with bad ideas. I appreciate wanting to do something different with the combat, but this just doesn't work. And sailing is just a miserable slog with how often you're stopped. There's just not a lot of fun to be had with this one. <laughs>